at 2.08 a.m. Samara. The night sky fractures into dozens of unmanned shadows. Air defense operators scramble, watching false echoes smear their radar screens, then impact. The Kuibyshev and Afip oil refineries erupt in fireballs, billions of dollars of infrastructure consumed in minutes. One question, how did Ukraine manage a drone strike a thousand kilometers deep, hitting two of Russia's most critical oil refineries? Spoiler, it was done with cheap kamikaze drones, and it changes the future of war. In the next nine minutes, you'll discover how Ukraine fused swarms of kamikaze drones with AI navigation to evade Russian air defenses. Why striking Samara and Krasnodar refineries crippled Russia's fuel backbone. The battlefield math proving drones worth thousands can paralyze assets worth billions. This isn't just another headline. This is the science and strategy of modern drone warfare. The kind you won't see on TV. Did you know? The Kuibyshev refinery in Samara alone supplies 2.5% of Russia's entire fuel output. And one drone strike lit it up like a second sunrise. Together, Samara and Afipsky refineries represent nearly 5% of national refining capacity. Gone in minutes. Here's what really happened the night Ukraine's drones turned Moscow's fuel fortress into fire. Subscribe for cinematic Wartech breakdowns, where we fuse battlefield tension with the engineering behind it. And tell us in the comments where you're watching from, and share this story with someone who still thinks distance equals safety. Above the Volga River basin, Russian radar screens flickered. Operators stared at echoes, tiny moving dots they dismissed as noise. Static, interference, a phantom swarm. But this wasn't noise. This was the spear point of Ukraine's most daring long-range strike yet. From 1,000 kilometers away, Ukrainian drones, no larger than compact cars, were already slicing through Russia's night sky. Engines barely audible, flying low, hugging terrain. Their mission, torch the beating heart of Moscow's fuel lifeline. One target, the Kuibyshev refinery in Samara. Another, the Afipsky refinery in Krasnodar. Both are among the largest refineries in Russia. Both critical arteries for diesel, jet fuel, and lubricants feed the Russian war machine. At 2.13, the first swarm broke through air defenses. At 2.15, explosions roared like thunderclaps. And within minutes, the horizon glowed orange. Russia's energy giants were burning. The targets that night weren't just industrial facilities. They were the invisible engines of Russia's war machine. Kuibyshev Refinery, Samara. A massive processing hub with a capacity of nearly 7 million tons of oil products annually. Situated deep in Russia's Volga heartland, more than 1,000 kilometers from Ukraine, it supplied frontline diesel and jet fuel, lubricants, and gasoline for armored columns and attack aircraft. To hit it was to choke Moscow's spearheads before they even rolled out. A Fipsky refinery, Krasnodar, another fortress of industry, processing more than 6 million tons annually. Positioned just 380 kilometers from the front, it was a cornerstone of southern Russia's logistics chain. Its outputs powered trucks, APCs, and artillery units grinding against Ukraine's defenses. Combined, these refineries represented nearly 5% of Russia's total national refining output, a figure that seems small until you realize it feeds thousands of vehicles daily. Both sites bristled with protection. Layered Panzer S1 batteries, radar domes, and electronic warfare systems. Yet Ukraine's drones weren't after buildings. They were after Russia's perception of safety. And if Moscow thought 1,000 kilometers was enough distance to stay untouchable, this night would prove otherwise. If Russia's billion dollar refineries were shielded by SAMs, radars, and jammers, how could drones built in Ukrainian garages even get close? On paper, this mission bordered on suicide. Samara lay over 1,000 kilometers from Ukraine's borders, deep inside Russian territory. No conventional artillery could reach it. No Ukrainian fighter jet could make the trip without being shredded by Russia's S-400s. Russia's layered SAM belts around Samara and Krasnodar were among the densest in the world. Pansir systems sat on rooftops, their cannons and missiles ready to shoot down low-flying threats. Ground stations in Kursk and Belgorod jammed GPS, injected false coordinates, and fried circuits. 
Any drone relying on satellite navigation alone would wander off course and crash. The Volga Basin offered little cover. Open skies meant every radar sweep could catch intruders. Ukraine faced a paradox. Send conventional aircraft and invite escalation. Or attempt something Russia's doctrine said was impossible. The answer wasn't firepower. It was asymmetry. Tiny, expendable, autonomous drones programmed to fly low, navigate without GPS, and strike where billion-dollar bombers couldn't. What Ukraine prepared next was a gamble. Engineering versus empire. The heroes of this mission weren't supersonic jets or stealth bombers. They were Ukrainian kamikaze drones. Born not from billion-dollar factories, but from converted workshops, garages, and university labs. For the Samara strike, Ukraine deployed UJ-26 Beaver drones, modified with extended range fuel tanks. With a radius of over 1,000 kilometers, they carried 40-50 kilogram warheads, enough to rupture oil tanks and trigger secondary explosions. Their navigation didn't depend on GPS alone. They fused inertial guidance, terrain contour matching, and AI-assisted waypoint hopping to survive Russian jammers. For Krasnodar's Afipsky refinery, a mix of lighter drones flew. Small, radar-evading kamikazes hugging terrain at treetop level. Their warheads, shaped charges optimized for transformers, fuel lines, and pump stations. What made the strike devastating wasn't just the hardware. It was doctrine. The swarm was airborne. Each drone locked to its path. But theory is clean. Reality is chaos. Could fragile UAVs survive jammers, radars, and interceptors long enough to hit? 02:13 a.m. Samara. The first wave of beavers skimmed low, undetected until the last minute. Radar operators saw flickers, then fire. A drone smashed into a crude oil tank. A shockwave ripped the compound, and flames spiraled skyward. Secondary tanks ignited like dominoes. 2:15 a.m. Krasnodar. Afipsky's defenses roared to life. Panzer cannons stitched the night, tracers arcing. But drones came in from multiple angles. One punched into a pumping station. Another tore into a transformer grid. Explosions cascaded across the facility. By 02117, smoke blanketed the complex. Russian firefighters scrambled. Sirens wailed. But the damage was irreversible. In just four minutes, two of Russia's most valuable refineries were burning. Billions in infrastructure, crippled by drones worth less than a main battle tank's engine. This wasn't just a raid. It was a demonstration of 21st century asymmetric war in action. The cost was staggering. Samara's Kubyshev refinery, with an annual capacity of 7 million tons, saw critical storage units and pumping systems destroyed. Production analysts estimated at least a 30 to 40% output reduction in the weeks to follow. A Fipsky refinery, Krasnodar, one of southern Russia's biggest, had entire electrical systems gutted. Rail-fed output halted. Product pipelines froze. For at least 72 hours, the site remained offline. Material loss? Tens of millions. Operational loss? Immeasurable. Ukraine had traded a few dozen drones worth less than $1 million total for strategic paralysis across two critical regions. That's asymmetric math. Cheap precision. Crippling costly empire. This was more than sabotage. It was a blueprint. Ukraine had proven it could reach 1,000 kilometers into Russia's interior, torching facilities Moscow once considered untouchable. For NATO analysts, this echoed a doctrine known as multi-domain disruption. Not defeating your enemy with brute force, but by slicing the arteries that keep its war machine alive. For Moscow, the message was chilling. Geography no longer guaranteed safety. Not Samara. Not Krasnodar. Not anywhere. And for Ukraine, it was psychological warfare, as much as material damage showing the world that garage-built drones could do the work of bombers. This was an asymmetric war elevated to an art. One night, two refineries, a thousand kilometers inside Russia. And Ukraine still struck? If drones can torch oil giants with a fraction of the cost? What happens when swarms number in the hundreds? Or thousands? Is this the future of war? Cheap precision defeating costly empires? 
Tell us in the comments where you're watching from and share this story with someone who still thinks distance equals safety. Because in 2025, distance doesn't protect, precision dominates.